Don't think you can help me. I'm Dr. Reed. I've recently taken the position of head surgeon here. War injuries, am I right? You guessed right, Doctor. German shell took my pretty little mug right off. But they still call me Thomas Elwood. Just fucking talk to everyone, dude. How is your stay with us, Mr. Elwood? Oh, it's bliss. I just escaped death in the trenches to be surrounded again by the moans of the dying. Can I ask you precisely why you're a patient here? It's the pain, sir. The drugs don't work. It just hurts under the scars. If you get my drift. Can't do anything. Can I do anything for your pain? Nurses gave me a bunch of pills. No effect. Told you. It's like the flames are under my skin, burning away. Who's treating you? Who is treating you? Is someone in particular looking after your case? Nobody since the old and tired doctor spoke to me. Started to think I was forgotten about. Wouldn't blame you. You don't seem worried by that. My face hurts so much more when I smile or cry. I've learned it's easier not to speak. But be assured I'm smiling inside. Okay. Interesting. Where were you stationed, sir? Did you serve for long? I really don't want to talk about all this shit. No offense. I was pushing too much. I served in France myself. I just wanted to know what happened to you. You were an officer, weren't you? Then I doubt we fought the same war, sir. No offense. How close are you to Miss Horcroft? Are you aware that she thinks she is a vampire? To wait for her next nibble is the best reason to stay here. Every time she approaches my bed, she treats me like something tasty. A normal person. Aren't you afraid? She may hurt you if the game goes too far. She's quite harmless, I can assure you. Her head's broken inside, is all. Her arm busted on the outside. But she's still beautiful. Living proof that there's hope for me. So do you let her bite you? You know that's not sanitary. And why not? She's only supping a few drops of me blood. And the pain... It's real for once. She could decide to bite less willing patients. Then it's another good reason for me to stay here, Doctor. You do realize she's mentally disturbed. It's called the Kotar Syndrome. She truly believes she's a vampire. In her madness, she never refers to my scars. And frankly, if I could, I'd join her world. <laughs> it seems much more fun than Hell it. yeah, dude. Do I have like other stuff I can ask? Soldier, do you need assistance? I'm fine. Just do something for this pain, will you? That's all I'm asking. Soldier. Oh, she just he just fucking said that. Jesus. Just do something for this pain, will you? That's all I'm asking. His blood is not very good. Goodbye for now, Mr. Elwood. You discuss on every street corner. The daily routine. You. Good evening, Miss Howcroft. How are you tonight? I need blood, Doctor. Warm, rich, Six fucking. Tell me, Thelma. Why do you feel so attached to me? Exactly. Edward? Why him? I'm. I'm not sure, Doctor. I think we have a bond of some sort. We've both suffered so much. He's the only mortal I... I find interesting. Do you plan to make him a vampire too? Of course not. How could I inflict my curse on anybody else? I'm not that cruel, Doctor. Would you say you and Mr. Elwood are romantically involved? No. No, Thomas is a delicate even though he disguises it. But I am not the woman he needs. <laughs> no, for I am a vampire doctor. Interesting. 
Okay. Interesting. I'll leave you, Mr. Interesting. To your nocturnal activities. Back to what I doing. Who's this? There's like someone in his room. You. Let's talk. Good evening, nurse. Good evening, doctor. I don't think I'm just using a lot of time just to talk into people. My name is Pepper, Pepper Hawkins. And I'm Dr. Jonathan Reed. Dr. Swansea has recently sick dude in this hospital. Well, it's a euphemism that your help will be appreciated, Doctor. Let's talk to her life. There's a situation here. How would you describe the situation at the Pembroke Hospital? It's serious. The flu is wreaking havoc amongst the staff and patients. We are running Rough. out of everything. Okay. Get a grip. Nurse Hawkins, the Spanish flu won't last forever. Even the Black Plague didn't kill everyone. I wish I could believe you. But what if this epidemic was worse? What if in the end, nobody was spared? You must get a hold of yourself, nurse. <sighs> Sorry, I'm exhausted. No one has any idea when this epidemic... I agree. How long have you been a nurse? Well, long enough to see that the epidemic is winning. And no matter how qualified you are, don't tell me you'll change that. You'd be surprised what dedication can achieve. Exactly. In medicine, sometimes we're just a test result away. From exactly. <sighs> Sorry, doctor. I don't want to sound bitter, but I'm just too tired to give a pep talk like Nurse Brannigan. Ooh. Ooh. How is the Pembroke staff coping with the epidemic? For who has like each other, dude? Milton, the ambulance driver, is even more grumpy than usual, especially concerning doctors. Why is Milton grumpy on a daily basis? Is it's it so fucking that? weird, dude. Milton's not the kind of man who's bothered about a bad reputation, whether he deserved it or not. Okay. Why does Milton dislike doctors? Well, I don't know. Just ask him. But be warned, Milton is not the chief. I don't know, man. I was just talking to him for a while. He was pretty, he was pretty fucking chill, dude. Goodbye. Nurse. Can someone tell me about that cr fucking crazy bitch, dude? It's okay, locked. I picked up some letter. That's interesting. To me, it is. Okay, there's a doctor out here now. Anyone else here? Can I go talk to this unknown? Uh, Milton unknown. You. I want to talk to you. You're a doctor. Good evening, sir. I'm Dr. Reed. I believe we're going to be colleagues. Reed? Yes, I've been informed about your arrival. I'm Waverly Aykroyd. Welcome aboard. Because he's a dickhead. Does my arrival inconvenience you in some way, Dr. Aykroyd? Let us just say that I don't particularly share Dr. Swansea's enthusiasm for hiring you. What we need here are reliable professionals, not overrated dabblers. I like this guy. He's a prick. If you have a problem with me, Dr. Aykroyd, please feel free to tell me. Dr. Swansea has imposed your presence on this hospital without asking anyone's advice. The benefit of his position but i don't agree with it i know we've never met before but i believe this hospital could use all the help it can get you will agree with that i'm sure oh but i have heard about you dr reed of course you can't say the same about me since i have not wasted my time courting the press you better change your fucking tone with me dude you are going to change your tone with me, my dear colleague, and very quickly. I don't think so. Perhaps you think yourself protected by Dr. Swansea, but I am still a free man, and I will speak to you the way I want. Since your tenure in this hospital is longer than mine... It's because I'm going to fucking kill this guy for sure. Let's just say I'm tired of the carelessness around me. I have always respected the skills of Dr. Swansea, but over time, his enthusiasm has become displaced. Carelessness? Exactly what are you talking about? We're here to save lives. 
The people who trust us are not volunteering for experimentation. They're here to be healed. I don't intend to run any radical experiments, Doctor. Even if I, as any good practitioner should, express an interest in pushing the boundaries of medical research. Modern medical methods were created through audacity and ego. But there are rules in our line of work, and they're here to protect our patients. It seems you have bad memories of your military service. I refuse to see this industrial slaughter as scientific progress. Okay. War only reveals the worst in men. We can at least agree on something, Dr. Ackroyd. I don't know what you've heard about me, but I have already proved my value as a practitioner. I don't question your skills, Dr. Reed, but your motive. Is it money? Fame? Or are you truly dedicated? And what exactly is that supposed to mean? I served in the war just like you. But unlike you, I did not use the wounded to play the modern sorcerer. Be careful what you insinuate, Dr. Ackroyd. I only want you to admit you used those men to improve your theories. This is ridiculous. My blood transfusion technique saved many lives, and you know it. You see? That is exactly what I hate about people like you. You avoid this kind of accusation instead of facing reality. Okay, so you're kind of a prick, dude. Thank you for your time. We'll talk later. That guy's a prick. This is a patient. Good evening, sir. I'm Dr. Reed. May I help you? I don't know if a third opinion is needed. Your colleagues are already arguing about my condition. I see. Would you mind telling me more about your situation? I'm Harvey Fiddick. All I want is to get me bloody arm fixed properly. Okay. Is there anything else that's bothering you? Can I help in any way? I'm all right. Considering the state of this place, I should consider myself lucky, I guess. He's healthy, his blood's not worth very much, though. Someone's actually dying. Okay. So I can return to work and to my family. I was more curious about what you were doing before being hospitalized. I'm a carpenter. And a good one, too. But that means I need both arms to feed my family. What's wrong with your fuck? Tell me about the doctors who are arguing about your case. Strickland and Ackroyd. They both want the best for me, but there's a lot of pride there. Doctors are no different from carpenters, it seems. What do you mean? I often had professional arguments with rivals on a building site. Difference is, I disagreed about wooden Oof. nails, not flesh and bones. Okay. Are you satisfied with your treatment here? Well, it's clear that I've chosen a bad time to be injured. Forgive my bluntness, but you seem overwhelmed by cases of the flu. I won't lie to you about it. I'm afraid we are. Are you sure you don't want to operate yourself, Dr. Reed? I have the feeling you're very capable. And your colleagues seem to think so too. In other circumstances, you would be right. But for now, I don't think I can take on the responsibility. My apologies. Okay. Goodbye for now, Mr. Fink. I'll see you later. You always knew the world could calm the children, Ellen. Who's this guy? Another doctor. Good evening, Doctor. I believe we're going to be working too. Dr. Reed. Dr. Swansea informed us of your arrival, but I could not dare to believe we'd have such good fortune. Such an honor, sir. <laughs> Thank you. And you are? I am Thoreau Strickland. Uh, Dr. Thoreau Strickland. Sick. I'm a great admirer of your work, Dr. Reed. Please, could you tell me something about yourself? I'm a great admirer of your work concerning blood transfusion, okay. Dr. Reed. Sick. I run my own experiments. I'm convinced Um, That's not good, dude. What made you choose to be a doctor? I'm not ashamed to admit you and your work. That's pretty fucked. I am honored to have the honor. This guy's pretty fucked. Inside. It's always a pleasure to share scientific and medical knowledge with someone eager to learn. I'll be glad to help you if I can. 
This epidemic may be the century's most terrible disaster, but I'm convinced that we, as doctors, are the only ones able to defeat it. Tell me about your experiments. I based my technique on my mentor's research. He helped oh, me. Oh shit, dude. My method. What is yours? I'd rather not talk about it. For now, it's just theories at first approach. My process is purely experimental and unsuccessful. As long as you're cautious and methodical, you may remain empty handed, but you won't fail. You're not the first one to warn me. But I am convinced knowledge is the main weapon against the ravages of this. This guy's area. pretty fucked, actually. <laughs>